Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for being here um, on this Palm Sunday. It's good to see all of you. Before we get started with worship, I'd like us to move to our announcement sheets. There's a lot of things on there. Um, for this week, I just wanted to highlight a few for us all to hear today. The first is that this afternoon at 1 p.m., we will be having an annual um, springtime parish picnic at the Hartley residence. There will be an Easter egg hunt, um, time for fishing, um, and bring a picnic lunch for you and your families. Um, it's open to everybody, and we hope to see all of you there. Um, this week, as many of you know, is Holy Week, so we have a lot of worship services. There will be something here in the worship space every evening this week. Monday and Tuesday will be Stations of the Cross, led by myself and Pastor Andrew. On Wednesday, we will be having our Unfailing Light service with Jerry Loheis as our guest speaker. Just a reminder that we will not be having dinner that evening. Um, and then Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and we hope that you will join us also for Easter services either Saturday evening or Sunday morning, or both. Um, also, just to have on your radar, our community dinner and bluegrass worship service will take place on Saturday, April 13th. Um, so please make sure that you are, that's on your radar. We hope to see you there. And then finally, a reminder that Vacation Bible School has started planning. If you are interested in helping out or bringing your kids or your grandkids, the theme this week it, or for this year is Stellar, and it will be held here at St. James. That's all for me. Thank you so much for being here, and please stand as you're comfortable as we begin worship. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. We praise you, O God, for redeeming the world through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Today he entered the holy city in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along his way. Bless these branches and those who carry them. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross, so that joined to his death and resurrection, we enter into life with you. Through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Sovereign God, you have established your rule in the human heart through the servanthood of Jesus Christ. By your spirit, keep us in the joyful procession of those who with their tongues confess Jesus as Lord and with their lives praise him as a savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated.
A reading from Isaiah. The Lord has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen to those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. disgrace to my neighbors, a dismay to my acquaintances. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. A reading from Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, 
humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name. Glory. Gospel according to Mark, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it, and we'll send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. And those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Christ. Be seated. It was a spring day in the year 33 AD, the beginning of the week of Passover. What was and continues to be recognized as the most sacred day of the Jewish year. Members of the Jewish faithful from all over the Roman world made their way to Jerusalem, the capital city of ancient Israel, to the temple the center of sacred imagination for the Jewish people, believed quite literally to be God's dwelling place on earth. Roughly a quarter million traveling from their homes, some for days on end, for a time of worship and celebration, coming together to remember to give thanks to God for God's deliverance of their ancestors from slavery in Egypt. So as it was, those gathered to celebrate this freedom of the past were themselves far from free. No longer enslaved by Pharaoh and Egypt, but occupied by Rome. Jerusalem, God's dwelling place on earth, a place of domination, of political oppression and economic exploitation, a place where the few, the powerful and the elite, ruled over the ordinary. The average person living in the region, no voice, no hope for better days. A place out of Rome's belief that the emperor himself was divine, where all other religious traditions of the day were seen at best as a nuisance, at times as a threat. With all of this, 
One can imagine the tension in Jerusalem during the week of Passover under Roman rule as thousands and thousands and thousands of Jews lined the streets and occupied territory to celebrate the freedom they didn't have. As Jesus, this self-proclaimed prophet, the one Messiah that has come, who has spent the past three years stirring the pot, challenging those in positions of authority, rides into town, seeking to fulfill the prophecies of old. As the scene unfolds, while our focus this weekend is on Jesus' triumphal procession of palms, the history books remind us that this wasn't the only parade in Jerusalem on that spring day. As Jesus enters the city from the east, in what New Testament scholar Marcus Borg deemed as the peasant procession, humble, sitting on a donkey barely large enough to carry him, a few fishermen, a tax collector, and a group of women by his side. From the west, the parade less known, what Borg deemed as the imperial procession, the procession of Pontius Pilate, Roman governor of Judea, marching into Jerusalem in full military might. Calvary on horses, foot soldiers adorned with armor from head to toe, bearing swords and spears, the sounds of marching hooves and boots against the stone streets, the clanging of weapons, and the beating of drums echoing throughout. Two processions, two very different goals in mind. The parade of palms, a command of peace to the nations, to end violence and oppression, about leveling the playing field between peasant and elite, the hope for life renewed. Pilate's parade, the embodiment of power and control, a reduction of life for all of those outside the Roman elite, the removal of hope. So here we are, nearly 2,000 years later, and in the centuries since, Christians have celebrated this day as Palm Sunday, the first day of Holy Week. As the time of Passover is for the Jewish faithful, with its climax of Good Friday and Easter, the most sacred week on the Christian calendar. And while hundreds of thousands of Christians aren't journeying to Jerusalem in celebration, today, across the world, those who place their faith in Christ Stand side by side those first disciples as Jesus enters the city, knowing exactly what fate awaits. Their emotions, ours. The fear and anxiety of what lies ahead. Their hopes, ours as well. That the one who comes in the name of the Lord would set us free from whatever it is that holds us in bondage, would bring peace, would bring new life. So we wave our palms for all to see. We gather for worship. We sing songs of praise and thanksgiving for the long-awaited Messiah. And we shout, Hosanna, Lord save. And all of it, reflecting on the question of what it is that we are looking for Jesus to save us from. 
what it is that we are looking for him to save us for. At the end of the week, those who shouted for Jesus to free them from Roman rule will call for his head. From Hosanna to crucify, from save to kill. And Pilate, he will conclude his imperial parade by giving the crowd exactly what they are asking for, exchanging a known criminal for the Prince of Peace. The corrupt, oppressive system of power will appear to have won the battle. Darkness will appear to have won over light. Death will have defeated life. And the kingdom of God come near will be hung upon a tree by the kingdom of the world. And the world will weep. And as we know, the events of today and those of the week ahead aren't the end. The conclusion has yet to be told. The story is far from over. Through Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem, we ourselves travel through the East Gate into Holy Week, from the upper room into the garden, from Pilate's quarters to the cross. And in this journey, we witness for ourselves the good news that Jesus has preached for so long. The kingdom of God come near by way of sacrificial love, that which is the greatest the world has ever seen, as it was for Jesus, the way for us. So let us follow confronting injustice and oppression as we go. Let us march together for those that Jesus came to serve, the blind and the crippled, the less fortunate and the outcast, the marginalized and the stranger in our midst, hailing Jesus, the Prince of Peace, as King and ruler of our lives over and when necessary against the powers of this world. For regardless of what we are in need of being saved from, this is the work that we have been saved for. The procession has begun. The king has arrived. Not dripping with signs of royalty, not bearing the things of military might, but meek and riding on a colt not to reign from a throne, but from the cross, giving his life for the life of the world, that he would make his dwelling place within each and every one of us, that we would be of the same mind, that we would empty ourselves, that we would humble ourselves, confessing our faith in Christ Jesus by giving ourselves for our neighbor in need, kingdom has come. Blessed is the one who has brought it to us. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Amen.
gather together as one in faith, let us confess that faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, and the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Trusting in God's promise to reconcile all things, let us pray for the church and the well-being of creation and the world in need. Blessed one, today the church sings glad hosannas as we enter the Holy Week. Prepare us to bear witness to Christ's suffering and death endured for our sake. Gather your people around the cross and comfort us with the resurrection hope. Hear us, O God. Renew your good creation and protect the balance of life on earth. Encourage the work of foresters, scientists, arborists, gardeners, and river keepers. We pray for the health of pollinating insects, songbirds, and native plants. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Establish peace and justice among all nations. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Bring hope to any who feel forsaken or forgotten. Make a way for refugees and asylum seekers. Reunite families enduring separation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Give energy and joy to our pastors, Andrew and Libby, youth leaders, Sunday school teachers, Jonathan and all our choirs, and the musicians. Bless our early learning center teachers. Watch over those who travel. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We are grateful for your healing grace, God. We ask that you be with all caregivers and loved ones. Help them each day. Uplift each and every person in body, mind, and spirit with your healing touch. Please bless Taylor, Helen, Paige, Daniel, Dr. Douglas, Joanne, Tim, Jim, Hazel and Frank, Justin, Barry, Nita, Billy, Jack, Jen, Carl, Mary Alice, John, Lisa, Nicholas, Colleen, John, Michelle, Dwayne, Ken, Sean, Andrew, Angie, Beverly, Bill, Daryl, Herb, Luke, Tim, Wayne, and all who we name before you now. Hear us, O oh God. Blessed one, our times are in your hands. Sustain us in your discipleship throughout our lives and receive us into everlasting life. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Accompany all of us on our journey, God of grace, and receive the prayers of our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen.
May the peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Please share a sign of that peace with one another. and blossoms gay are strewn this day in festal preparation where Jesus comes to wipe our tears away he now the throng to welcome him prepare join all and see Sound with united acclamation. Hosanna! Praise be the Lord! Praise him who cometh to bring us salvation. forth and people by its might once more their freedom gained from degradation humanity doth give to each his right while those in darkness find restored the light join all and see And with united acclamation, Hosanna! Praised be the Lord, bless him who cometh to bring us salvation. So bless Jerusalem, of all thy songs sing the emancipation, through boundless love the Christ of Bethlehem brings forth the hope to thee forevermore. Join all and sing his name. voice we sound with united acclamation hosanna praised be the lord bless him who cometh to bring us salvation
the Lord be with you. up your hearts. We live to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, whose suffering and death gave salvation to all. You gather your people around the tree of the cross, transforming death into life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. for the journey, a feast for hungry hearts. Come. Thanks be to God.
Please stand as you're comfortable. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Beloved, we are God's own people, holy, washed, and renewed. May God bless you and keep you, shower you with mercy, and fill you with courage, and grant you peace. Amen. Amen. Share your bread. Thanks be to God. 